So we have some really great examples of data and analytics being put into practice in our business. Um, we focus on several different areas. So things around product, we look at things that help our customers, we look at things that help our productivity and efficiency as a business, and things that help sustainability and our people. Um, a really good example, I think if we start looking at product, we have a couple of really nice examples. Um, we've done some work around knowledge surfacing for our research scientists. So we scour the globe, we scour all the information sources that we can to find information about Croda products. And we use artificial intelligence to bring that to life, to visualize that and prioritize that for our scientists. So it cuts our research process down, but it also helps understand where our products being used in the business. Danny, I think you had a really good example around product formulation. Yeah, absolutely. So we've been working with R&D teams to create uh, AI generated um, formulations. So the idea is that before a scientist would go into a lab to create a formulation, we can screen that um, using, a, using an AI tool and a user interface, which would allow the scientist to uh, essentially replicate the test they're about to perform in real life. So they could choose the ingredients that they want to put into that formulation. They can set the concentration levels, click go, and essentially predict what properties that product will have. I think it's a good example as well if we think about product. The other bonus that we have is when we think about the work that we did um, in the Netherlands with seeds. Yeah, so this was a, um, a use case that was handled by our data science team based in the Netherlands. And essentially what this tool is, um, is a robotic system that will x-ray vegetable seeds and it will identify which of those seeds are likely to germinate. So what that means for our customers is that they get a, a batch of seeds where we can guarantee the, a certain level of germination rate. Now, obviously, that's got benefits for the customer, but it's got environmental benefits as well. It means less land has to be used to, uh, to grow the crop and get the same yield. And that kind of aligns with our commitment to be land positive. Definitely. Sustainability for us is really important. It's one of our core principles. And it's brilliant that we've been able to generate use cases that support that. And um, we did some really great work around carbon footprinting of our products. So today we can tell the carbon footprint of our products, which is really important for us as a business principal, but really important for our customers. They want to know that the products that they're buying and their carbon footprint and that, that we're doing the right thing for the climate and for sustainability. I think a great area that we haven't probably touched on yet is what we do in terms of customer and how we support our customer service teams in retention. I don't know if Dan Yeah, can so we, we collect an awful lot of data on our customers that goes back years. Um, over the years, we've lost some customers, we've retained some customers. So what we can do with that data is, is train a model to help us predict which customers we're likely to retain, and which customers we're likely to not. By providing that information to our sales teams, it allows them to um, act quickly sort of mitigate any risks that might be there and, and help to drive customer attention. So I think one of the um, big successes was when we trialed this in a particular area of the business and we managed to prevent um, over 2 million in revenue from churning. Yeah, it's a really great example for our customers um, and how, how we want to protect our business. But also I think the work that you did in demand forecasting. So in reality, AI isn't just about our customers is also about making the work that our people do more efficient and the work you did, you know, we've just recently launched on demand forecasting. Yeah. I think is a great example of that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that is, our whole supply chain is incredibly complex. I think we've got over 60 dispatch locations. We dispatch to over 130 countries and um, we need to make sure we've got our products in the right place at the right time to fulfill our customer demands. So over the past year, we've been working with our supply chain team um, to improve our enterprise level forecast to make sure we can not only improve our customer service, um, but also in improve our uh, internal processes and uh, employee satisfaction as well. It also helps us prevent waste because is it 6,000 tonnes? There's an I got that right? Yeah. That we save every month because of that? Yes, yeah, so there's, it's such a complex problem if we get it wrong one way we end up under forecasting and that means we, we can't supply our customers and we deliver things late if we go too far the other way it means we over forecast and that means we've got a lot of stock sitting around in a warehouse 
Our new system, we expect it will reduce over forecasted volume by 6,000 tonnes per month. Really, really great results for our people, for our customers of the environment.